Welcome to Equity Is, a podcast from the School District of Philadelphia's Office of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. This podcast is about cultivating prosperity and liberation for students and staff. We do this by showcasing and debriefing on the great equity work that is being done throughout the School District of Philadelphia community. With each episode, we hope to cover topics that will create pathways for marginalized populations in our district by removing barriers, increasing access and inclusion, building trust, and creating a shared culture of social responsibility and organizational accountability. I am your host, Tori Potenza, the Program Manager for the Office of DEI. On this episode of Equity Is, we wanted to showcase an event that our office helped put together at our central office just a few weeks ago. During the month of November, we celebrate Transgender Awareness Week. This is observed mid-November every year. It is a one-week celebration leading up to Transgender Day of Remembrance, which memorializes victims of transphobic violence. In honor of this, the district hosted its second annual Trans Remembrance Coffee House and Open Mic Night, in which staff, students, families, and community members were invited into the space to honor the lives of trans people that have been lost and to also create a space where people could share art, dance, songs, poems, tell stories, and even do some comedy. Lumen, the brainchild of this event, and a valued staff member at the district, speaks a little bit more about what this event means to them. Hi, I'm Lumen, the organizer of the event. I'm here with my fabulous team. Um, I started the Trans Remembrance Coffee House and Open Mic because I realized that there was a lack of trans programming at the school district, and I thought I could be at least a blip in the in the pond to bring visibility and um, recognition to our trans students and our queer students. So that's why I started it. <laughs> We're here before everything starts, and it's in the quiet of the storm. I hope it goes well today. Several community groups and organizations also tabled the event, offering resources, books, and also highlighting the many ways in which they can help LGBTQ populations in Philadelphia. Oftentimes, these are free services and ones available to youth in Philadelphia. In attendance were members of Galay, Pash, the Mazzoni Center, Glisten, William Way, and Children and Youth Experiencing Homelessness. Their information will all be provided in the show notes. We did not record the performances as we wanted to make sure that folks had the opportunity to share themselves in an intimate environment with other members of the trans community, LGBTQ folks, and allies. In creating this space, we thought it was best to make this a private event, but we have some words from Lumen who kicked off the event by introducing the day, what would happen, and also reading a poem. It's a scary time to be trans and queer, especially if you're trans and queer and an individual of color. It's a tumultuous time for trans individuals throughout the world, but especially here in the United States. You can turn on any channel and hear activated discourse from lawmakers and leaders regarding our bodies, our lives, and our rights. The way they targeted trans girls specifically is important. As the older brother of a black and beautiful trans girl, it's disheartening to see the institutions she has to navigate. This discourse has led to a spike in transphobic related hate crime, and those numbers climb higher and higher by the day. I'd like to read a poem by one of my favorite trans poets that discusses this violence that actually struck really hard chord for me. Here, All the Dead Boys Look Like Me by Christopher Smith. All the Dead Boys Look Like Me. Last time I saw myself die, it was when police killed Jesse Hernandez, a 17 year old brown queer who was sleeping in my car. Yesterday I saw myself die again. Fifty times I died in Orlando. And I remember reading Dr. Jose Esteban Munoz before he passed. I was studying at NYU when he was teaching, where he wrote stuff that made me feel like queer brown survival was possible, but he didn't survive. And now on the dance floor, in the restroom, on the news, in my chest, there are another 50 bodies that look like mine and are dead. 
And I have been marching for Black Lives and talking about the police brutality against Native communities too for years now. But this morning, I feel it. I really feel it again. How can we imagine ourselves, we being Black Native today? Brown people, who, how can we imagine ourselves when all the dead boys look like us? Once I asked my nephew where he wanted to go to college, what career he would like, as if the world, as if the whole world was his for the choosing. Once he answered me without fear, tombstones or cages or hands from a father, the hands of my lover, yesterday praised my whole body, made the angels from my lips, Ave Maria. Full of grace, he propped me up like the roof of the cathedral of New York City. Before we opened the news and read and read about people who think brown queers cannot build cathedrals, only cemeteries. And each time we kiss, a funeral plot opens. In the bedroom, I accept his kiss and I lose my reflection. I am tired of writing this poem, but I want to say one last word about yesterday my father called. I heard him cry for the second time in my life. He sounded like he loved me. It's something I'm rarely able to hear, and I hope if anything, his sound is what my body remembers. Thank you for listening. After opening the event, Teresa Capici, a school-based staff member and organizer of GSAs, also known as Gender and Sexuality Alliances, throughout the district, introduced a presentation created by the Kensington Kappa GSA. The presentation showcased those lost and honored those lives. Afterwards, Nicholas Bungard, a professional learning specialist at the district, led attendees in a candlelight vigil Folks were given cards that had pictures and bios of people in the trans community that had been lost this year. As the names were called, attendees would stand and together say, rest in power. This was a beautiful moment that ended with a table full of names, candles, and recognitions. For the next part of the event, those who signed up were able to come up and perform their various acts surrounded by a supportive and loving environment. It was a beautiful and moving space to be in. As mentioned, we did not record these performances, but folks were invited to come up and share words about various topics related to the day. Participants were asked things like, what is one thing about being queer that brings you joy? Hi, my name is um, River. My pronouns are she, they, z. And one thing about being queer that brings me joy is that there's such an open community that you're able to be yourself within. And personally, I'm so glad that I've met my friends who have supported me throughout the journey of my queerness. You know, being trans femme is kind of not a common thing I've seen. So it's nice that there's support to being truly who you are and being the kind of person that you want to be. The one thing that brings me joy about being queer is the friendships that I've made along the way. You know, like, People were always kind and like accepted me for who I am, mainly because they were also queer. But it's cool because we uh, hang out and we joke and it's fun. One thing about being queer that brings me joy is just the community that we have and how it surrounds like people. Like we don't really like exclude, we usually don't exclude people. And like certain aspects of um, how we handle certain situations and like political aspects are pretty cool too. Like um, the, how the community comes together to handle certain situations and fight certain conflicts. Like I feel like we do everything really as a whole. And I really like that about our community and I like that about being queer. What does trans visibility mean to you? Transgender visibility uh, to me means the absolute freeness to be yourself, to love others, um, and to share joy. And finally, what would you say to people that want to be better allies to the trans community? So one thing that I would say to people who want to be a better ally to the trans community is to really work on pronouns. 
So I know that there might be a lot of changes to pronouns, to the pronouns that people use, whether that be pronouns that people use them themselves, or whether that be pronouns that people use in general. I know that um, there are pronouns that get added into the mix, such as Z and Zim, um, but it is important to keep track of the pronouns that people are using and to keep asking them, um, not I mean, consistently every day, um, but if somebody says, hey, like my pronouns are changing, then try to make sure that your conversation changes with that. And if they say, like, something is making them, them uncomfortable or something that would make them more comfortable, make sure that you are changing to keep the comfort so that, because allyship is not just, oh, I'm going to step away from this kind of, like, step away and just not communicate with this because, oh, obviously it's making something, like, somebody or something uncomfortable, but rather interacting and working through the uncomfortability. My name is Talia. My pronouns are she and her. And what I would say to people who want to be better allies to the trans community is to show up speak out. When you see things, say something. When you hear someone make an inappropriate joke, say something about it. Just show up and be present. I will tell people who want to be a better ally to trans and non-binary folks is to use the TLC. Talk with, listen to, and show compassion and support for the community genuinely and intentionally. cisgender woman of a certain age and what I would say to anyone who wants to be a better ally to the trans community is to stop thinking and worrying about what other people are going to think and how will I be received. The majority of us have an incredible amount of uh, privilege there and we should lean into that privilege to stand with people who don't have the privilege that we do so that we can support them because that's what they need just to know that we are here for them. So just stop overthinking it and do it. I would say to people who want to be a better ally to the trans community that they can read and if you aren't someone that is really into reading, there are wonderful TikToks, TikTok accounts, there are wonderful Instagram accounts, there are wonderful YouTubers, there is great ebooks and more to support your learning, right? And when push comes to shove, it is okay to ask your friend and say, hey, I want to be here for you. I want to be here for others. And I want to be a better person in this world. And I want to focus in on this area as a humanitarian. And I would love your support. And so I think that that could be a simple way of doing it. And if you're a, a, a scholar and you're like, nah, 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 I need to take a course, they got a Go forth and prosper. It was a truly moving and beautiful night that brought in so many amazing people to share their experiences and be part of and embrace a community. We look forward to the third annual Coffee House hosted next year. But to wrap up our coverage of the day, we have Nicholas Bungard, one of the organizers of the event, who shared some of their reflections on the day. Hi, I'm Nick, he, they, and I identify as non-binary. I'm so proud to have been a part of the Transgender Remembrance Coffee House because it was a bold statement of visibility and power for trans and gender non-conforming folks in a space where LGBTQ people are rarely seen and celebrated, schools and education. We're fortunate that the School District of Philadelphia granted us space at their central offices. The Transgender Remembrance Coffee House was an event that was bittersweet 
because it was a turbulent mix of sadness and joy. Being LGBTQ is not a choice, and it's not a trend. It's real people with real issues and concerns. We're also beautiful, unique, and loved. And that's what we saw at the coffee house. I also want to comment that no less than five days after we held a memorial for trans lives lost in 2022, there was a mass shooting at Club Q in Colorado. It was a hate crime on LGBTQ people, and it shows that it is not safe for our identity group in this country at this time. Well, I don't claim to have answers for the real issues our community faces, and I don't even think there are words that can take away the pain of the lives lost. There is one thing that helps me through a tough decision or a challenging situation. I tell myself the answer is love. So no matter what the question or the challenge that you face in your life, the answer is just love. As Nick mentioned, it's heartbreaking that such a tragedy happened after such a great event filled with joy. But it's also a reminder that these events are important, and this is why visibility, allyship, and joy matter. With the holiday season coming up, it's a great opportunity to reflect on how we can make the lives of trans folks better. In particular, one way to help this holiday season is to participate in Trans Santa, a program in which trans youth make wish lists and folks can purchase holiday gifts for them to make their seasons a little bit brighter. And as a reminder, you can listen to our episode on the gender binary and socializations of gender norms and sexual orientation, as well as looking for other resources to deepen your understanding of the community. As mentioned, the partners who joined us on the day of the event will have their information in the show notes. So if you are interested in participating, volunteering, donating, or checking out any of the great events they have, please do. Thank you for listening to Equity Is. We will be back with more episodes on equity issues, initiatives, and programs, as well as learning opportunities. Our music is by the students from Rock to the Future, an organization offering free music programs to students in Philadelphia. And to learn more about what our office does, visit our website, philasd.org backslash DEI. Thanks again.